welcome to JDC Diabetes Gems video, April 2010. This month, I am going to briefly talk about diabetes and liver disease. I am sure that you are familiar with diabetes resulting in heart diseases, kidney diseases, strokes, disease of the eye, neuropathy, sexual dysfunction, etc, etc. But have you ever learned or read about diabetes producing diseases of the liver? If not, it is time. Because globally, diabetes as a cause of chronic liver disease is going up and up and up. And in some developed countries, the number one cause of chronic liver disease now is diabetes. In diabetes, you get a spectrum which starts with, at one end, fatty liver, then you, you call it non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, the non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, and in some patients ending up in cirrhosis liver and very very rarely even in cancer of the liver, hepatocellular carcinoma. And strangely in diabetes there is an association between <coughs> diabetes and hepatitis C and cirrhosis liver. So how to detect it? In diabetes, we always advise our patients on routine laboratory investigations and physical examination. Every time you visit your doctor, you go through a battery of blood investigations, urine investigations, and at the end of it, we will examine you, we, we will make you lie down and examine from head to foot. And all these procedures are actually carried out <coughs> to find out whether diabetes is affecting some organ and if at all it is affecting, if you are careful enough to do evaluations at the right time periodically, you detect them much earlier in the natural progression of that disease so that the diseases are totally curable. And how to detect liver disease in diabetes? Routinely, at least once in every six months, patients should undergo liver function tests and if required, once in every six months, ultrasound scan of the abdomen. The ultrasound scan of the abdomen probably will tell you the presence of a fatty liver. And that would be there even before the onset of diabetes. But if the liver function tests are becoming abnormal, like the SCOT, CPT level or the AST, ALT level going up, you call them the liver enzymes. Or if there is a change in the bilirubin level, then that indicates involvement of the function of the liver. And that is a time when you are diabetologist or your endocrinologist or your treating physician will be probably referring to you, referring you to a gastroenterologist or a hepatologist. A non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or a fatty liver per se may not require any treatment. But if there is a factor like uncontrolled blood sugar or if you have a drug as a culprit producing the elevation in the hepatic enzymes, then the doctor will sort it out. However, some of the drugs used in the treatment of diabetes like metformin, glitazones, and even statins are nowadays used for the treatment of liver disease and diabetes. In early liver disease, statins are now supposed to be protective. Those drugs used for treating high cholesterol might result in transient elevation of hepatic enzymes or transaminases, but in due course, the enzymes will get normalized. So you need not Stop statins if the liver enzymes are mildly elevated. 
But when do you stop a drug or when do you start a drug or whether you require treatment or not or whether you require a biopsy or not and uh, whether a reference is required or not, they are all decided by the treating doctor. So whether or not you are covered by insurance, the next time when you are meeting your diabetes team, go through the investigations which can tell you whether the liver is getting involved or not. So next time we will again meet with a new topic. Until then, goodbye.